For me personally, and I think for a lot of people of my generation of computer architects, Arvind is an inspiration and he's a legend. Actually, my involvement in parallel programming goes back to 70s. <laughs> uh, what happened in 2000 was I started applying some of those techniques to hardware design. But I did most of my work on parallel programming was done in 80s and early 90s. And then I switched gear, but I've always been interested in parallel computing. So first of all, uh, I'd like to draw a distinction between parallel programming and concurrent programming. Uh, parallel programming, I would define it narrowly as just about performance, that we have multi-cores, we have many cores, we want to make use of them, and of course that means that if I'm using uh, 100 processors as opposed to 50, I should get some performance benefit. That's an important area, but not nearly as important as uh, concurrent programming. Almost every activity we do uh, involves a lot of parallel activities in it, or reaction in it. If you look at a robot, it's looking at many, many things, and it has to react to it, so there is a lot of uh, programmatic thing going on internally to react in time and then take more input and so on. My dream is that when freshmen at MIT will be taught parallel programming and sequential programming will be taught as a special case of parallel programming. So to me, parallel programming is programming. <laughs> By parallel, I mean again parallel and concurrent programming. By mid-90s, funding for research for parallel computing was dead. <laughs> it has been declared either a failure, depending upon who you talk to, or that, well, Intel is doing it. You know, the microprocessors are getting fast enough every year. We don't need parallel computing. So during that period when the funding for parallel computing was almost dead, I decided to do something else. And I used many of the techniques we had uh, learned and we had discovered and we had developed for parallel programming. I suddenly uh, started applying them to designing hardware. I mean, I think even the current multi-cores really are just people are taking many sequential processors and putting them together. Yeah, there are changes, but not enough. So I'm still waiting for some young person to come up and show us <laughs> that if we make the following changes in the machine, and if we program it in this way, then compiler can do the job and there will be better mediation. So that was my goal in uh, all through 70s and 80s. And the approach I took to solve that problem was to organize the machine uh, according to data flow principles, which were pioneered by Professor Jack Dennis at MIT. And the idea was to build processors, and at the same time, I was interested in showing how I can take a high-level language, a high-level notation, and compile it very efficiently. What he did with Monsoon Data Flow Processor was seminal work. Also what he has done with, for example, trying to take Dataflow as a processing model and making it practical and useful for solving a variety of problems has really taken Dataflow and turned it into a practical solution for a lot of different problems. The Dataflow machine in particular that I built was called Monsoon uh, and uh, 16 of those machines were built. Uh, two were 16 node machines and the other 14 were smaller uh, machines. And one of them was at MIT and the other one was at uh, Los Alamos. I think computer architecture should be taught differently than what it is done today and I absolutely want to do this. <laughs> so I want to write a book. <laughs>
<laughs> oh, I have published one more implicit parallel programming, uh, which was in 2000, I think, you know. He's delivered more than 70 distinguished and keynote lectures. Please welcome Dr. Arvind. <laughs> Oh, I am very honored, <laughs> very, very honored. I mean, you know, to be placed in the company of <laughs> the pioneers of computing like Eckert, Mockley, Professor Morris Wilkes, you know, Tony Hoare. <laughs> the theory that he created when he was working on Dataflow, it created a body of knowledge that he then took into several different startups. And the one I know a lot about is BlueSpec. And Looking at BlueSpec, which is a company that's going to help you make digital designs, you wouldn't think that it would relate to his earlier work, but he, it, it really does. It's, it's ingenious. It leverages a lot of functional programming concepts and data flow concepts, and it's a very practical tool for people to use to build very complex digital systems. Really, one has to do what one believes in. <laughs> I think the level at which uh, most of us work, it's not sustainable if you don't enjoy it on a day-to-day -day basis. You can't work on it just because of the results. You have to work on it because you say, I have to know the answer to this. <laughs> the Good Award is one of our highest awards. It's given for either a contribution that you've made to information processing that's had a significant change, a significant effect on the field, have changed the course of the field. Or, for example, we also account for someone who's made contributions throughout their career that have had the same effect. Finally, a word of caution that I got from my senior colleague, Professor Fano, when he received some very big award. <clears throat> Arvind, this is a way of your colleagues telling you that your career is over. <laughs> I hope not. I'm, I'm not going away. No, I mean, I'm the one who has survived because of outstanding collaborators. I love working with people. I especially love working with students, both graduate and undergraduates. Uh, and uh, I'm very, very fortunate to be at MIT, which is just full of extremely brilliant people <laughs> and students keep coming, they get the only issues, they get younger every year. <laughs>